Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words, expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem, the continuation of the Mesilas Yisharim, which is the way of the upright or also called the path of the just from the Ramchal, Rav Moshe Chaim Lutzato. And this is the Sefer from the Art Scroll, Yafa edition. If you haven't seen it yet, here's what it looks like. And I will have a link below to Art Scroll so you can check out all they offer. And this is part number 104, Rosh Hashem finishing up chapter 25, which is the second to last chapter. Amazing. It's uh, over two years. Um, and I don't know what I'll do after, but we still have time. Uh, so last time uh, was uh, the second um, uh, video on chapter 25, talking about uh, the constant contemplation in order to acquire the fear of sin. This is chapter 25, the way to acquire fear of sin. So now we're continuing up to finish this chapter. So it says, all of these points that acquiring a true feeling for Hashem's omnipresence and omniscience is a difficult task, that it can be accomplished only through intense contemplation, and that even after it is acquired, it must constantly be reinforced, may be derived from the study of a mitzvah related to a duty of a Jewish king. So it says, this is reflected in that which the Holy One, blessed is he, commanded the king of Israel in Devarim 17.19. Uh, I'll read it in Hebrew first. It says, He shall write for himself two copies of this Torah in a scroll, and it shall be with him, and he shall read it from, from it all the days of his life. Um, again in Hebrew, So that he will learn to fear Hashem, his God. So here he's giving you the formula. Hashem's giving you the formula how to fear. So the uh, commentary says that the word gilmad, learn, in this context, does not refer to the intellectual endeavor of learning as one who studies a subject, but rather to training oneself to think and act in a certain way, as Ramchal proceeds to explain. Okay, then he continues. You thus learn that year of fear cannot be habituated into one's behavior, except through unceasing study of Torah, quote, all the days of his life, like it says earlier, what I've just read, okay. And you should note also that the verse says that he will learn to fear, right? It says, Laman Yilmad, learn to fear, and does not say simply so that he will fear. Again, that's the, the optimum word, learn, okay? Um, the verse expresses it this way specifically because this degree of yira is not attained naturally. To the contrary, it is far from a person due to the physicality of the senses as explained above. Therefore, it can be acquired only through habituation. And there is no method of habituation for Yira other than very diligent study of Torah and its ways without interruption. So hence, that's the way to do it, to learn Torah. And the commentary says this supports the above points that Yira's Chet, the ultimate level of fear of Hashem, A, requires a great deal of effort, and B, that the effort consists of diligent study of Torah and the ways of Hashem. And C, that this effort must continue always without any let up whatsoever. The king must read from the Torah all the days of his life so that he will learn to fear Hashem. So there, there's the uh, answer. So you have to keep doing it, effort, um, diligent study, and continue it, continually do it. Okay. And then it continues. Uh, let's see where I am. Okay, so it's now a specific area of Torah thought on which one must focus. This means specifically that a person must contemplate and examine this matter, meaning the truth of the omnipresent and omniscience of Hashem, constantly. Commentary says to acquire Yiras Chait, it is not sufficient to study general topics of to subjects of Torah. One must focus on the Torah's teachings that Hashem's Shekhinah is present everywhere and that He is all knowing. Okay, and then it continues um, to uh, to examine this matter constantly when He sits, when He walks, when He lies down to sleep, and when He rises. And we know this from where the Shema Yisrael says this. So it, the um, uh, commentary says that style, it's a stylistic citation of Devarim 6-7, 6 verse 7, the passage of Sh Shema Yisrael. By reading this passage twice daily, one accepts upon himself the yoke of heaven's sovereignty from Mishnah and Brachos 13a. The Ramchal would seem to be alluding that this is a vehicle for acquiring fear of sin. And then he continues. Um, so he says this, he walks when he sleeps, etc., until he firmly affixes it in his mind, the truth of this matter, namely the truth that the Shekhinah of Hashem, blessed be he, is everywhere, and that we actually stand in his presence each and every moment. When one reaches this point, he will then genuinely, genuinely fear him, meaning Hashem. And commentary says here that the Ramah 
opens his glosses to the Shulchan Aruch Aruchayim 1.1 by setting out the very high standard of conduct described here by the Ramchal, citing the verse, Shivisi Hashem Unegdi Tamid. I have set Hashem before me always. That's from Tehillim 16, verse 8. The Ramah writes that realizing that one is always in the presence of Hashem is a central principle of Torah life and the way of the righteous. For the way a person sits, moves, and acts when he is alone in his house is different from the way he sits, moves, and acts when he is in the presence of a great king. The manner of a person's speech is very different when he is in the company of only his family than when he is standing in the throne room. Certainly, Ramah concludes, when one contemplates that the great king, capital, is standing over him and observing all his deeds, he will immediately be seized by awe and humility. A person's own deed and his very comport, comportment in all, at all times must bear witness to the great truth that Hashem's presence is everywhere. It is noteworthy that this level of awareness which Ramchal sets forth as one of the highest and most difficult of character traits is written at the very outset of Shulchan Aruch, the code that delineates the basic obligations of every Jew. Rabbi Chester Sarnin Iunim uh, explains that this is because it is critical for everyone to recognize this exalted level as his goal, even at the very beginning of his service of Hashem. Only when the ultimate goal is set out clearly before him, he can he he he, he can be sorry before before him he can begin can he begin sorry his first step with clarity and purpose. Okay, and then he continues to finish off. This is the meaning of what David HaMelech would, would pray, uh, saying in Tehillim 8611. Um, in Hebrew it says, dar, Teach me, o Hashem, your way that I may go in your truth. Dedicate my heart to fear your name. The end is, And the commentary here says that by contemplating the Torah and the ways of Hashem, where it says, Teach me, o Hashem, your way, a person will naturally be ingrained with the truths of Hashem, meaning the principle of his omnis omnipresence and omniscience, meaning that I may go in your truth. And this is the path to devoted, unceasing fear of Hashem, where it says, dedicate my heart to fear your name. Interestingly, Ramchal concludes his introduction of Misil HaShisharim, where he outlines the general goal, the goals of the entire work with this very verse. Indeed, Yirat Chait is the highest rung on the spiritual ladder that a person can attain completely through his own effort. Achieving this exalted level is the goal from the outset, and it is what motivates the entire effort that begins with the first step onto the ladder. And then the summary now of chapter 25, the way to acquire Yiras Chet is by contemplation of the truths that Hashem's Shechin is everywhere and that he observes and understands every action or speech of man and the thoughts that motivated it. Due to the limitations of the physical senses, it is difficult for a person to achieve and absorb the real clarity of these truths. The only way to achieve such clarity is not to subsequently lose it and not to subsequently lose it, sorry, is by constantly and unceasingly contemplating these truths without any lapse of attention. This will help him overcome these limitations and bring him to truly fear Hashem. And that's the end of chapter 25, Baruch Hashem. And I hope and pray that we will all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and rebuilding of the final and everlasting base. Amen, and thanks for watching.